Hi guys, today I'm going to discuss a certain limitation of the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant which I have discovered. I hope this video will be useful to those who are considering purchasing this device or people who found this limitation on their own and they are kind of baffled whether it's a defect or whether it's a serious issue and they should send their throttle quadrant back to Honeycomb or it's just a glitch in the system. First I must admit this is probably one of the best throttle quadrants available on the market for flight simmers and uh, don't get me wrong this device is solid and beautiful every single button of this device work works in my flight simulator which happens to be X-Plane 11 I uh, read a lot of reviews, I installed the software to make, the sh make sure that all the buttons and all the lights work properly. However, there's a certain limitation which is somewhat an, an issue for me. It may not be an issue for somebody else, but uh, for me I found it's uh, a little bit tricky to use flying certain types of planes. So let me show you what I mean and first before I go into the simulator I would like to show it to you on in Windows joystick calibration tool which I have uh, right here on the screen so if I go into the tool and I start moving my axis of the throttle quadrant so the throttle throttle axis to throttle axis and then props and mixture control so everything looks as it should the calibration tool shows that uh, my axis go below from zero to maximum when I move my levers here however saying that what you can also notice if you bring your lever below the detent line detent point there's no motion anymore Windows calibration tool doesn't detect any motion instead it only detects a switch, in this particular case switch number 26 or 25. So it doesn't detect any motion, so there's no continuous motion between 0 and 1 when I go from the lowest uh, position past the detent line to the maximum position. Again, for some planes it's, it's not going to be important, so, uh, such as Cessna 172, that's not a big deal because it doesn't have any reverse, it doesn't have the the uh, prop feathering. For some other planes it may be important. So now let's uh, let me switch to the simulator and show how it works in the simulator. This is the view of the throttle quadrant in King Air C90 in my X-Plane 11 simulator. And if I start moving the levers you can see that they go from 0 to all the way to the maximum in the alpha section of the throttle quadrant. Same goes for the props. If I go from the detent line up to the maximum, they move fine. And the uh, mixture control works the same way. Now, as soon as I try to bring the levers down past the detent line, nothing happens. So let's see if we can do something about it. So in the simulator, and again you can see that these are my axes which are calibrated between 0 and 1 but only between the detent line and the top position. If I go down, instead of recording it as an axis, it finds there's a button association associated with it and same for every single lever and same for mixture control so this is definitely a limitation for planes like C90 where ideally what you would like to see is if you go down past the detent line you would like to see the levers moving all the way down to reverse uh, through the better uh, through the beta region and for feathering you want them to go all, all the way down to full feather position and again for the same for 
the mixture control. You want to be able to shut off the engine once you pass the detent line, or at the detent line you can stay at neutral, which is uh, mixture one, and then go all the way uh, once you're ready to take off. So this is kind of a limitation for uh, planes like King Air C90. Uh, in X-Plane, there is a way to assign the bottom por portion of these two axes or two levers to either toggle in the reverse or toggle in the maximum reverse, which works to an extent, but it defeats the purpose of the, of the whole system. And unfortunately, X-Plane doesn't even provide the way to properly feather the uh, the props uh, with the with the switch or with the button, so this won't be even possible. I was suspecting that this is not really a limitation of the device itself, and this has nothing to do with the with any of the defects, and it's working properly. And what I was suspecting it's actually a firmware issue where the levers were not properly calibrated and uh, the bottom position was not properly calibrated by Honeycomb. What does it mean? All these levers are controlled by potentiometers. So there are six potentiometers here. Each of them can go from the lowest position to the highest position. And it happens that at the detent line the control board of this particular device, that's the way how I view it, decides to read not the analog signal, but rather to say that once we reach that particular resistance of the potentiometer, it's going to be a, let's say, a digital signal which says variable A is switched between, let's say, 0 and 1, so which manifests basically a switch. And uh, then I called Honeycomb and I was able to speak with uh, somebody tech support and they actually confirmed this. So this limitation is not a defect, it was actually intended. The Honeycomb program, their control board, saw that once we passed this detent line, it registered the motion as a switch rather than as an axis. And the question is, why would they do that? And according to this person, which sounds very reasonable to me, they were trying to satisf satisfy the needs of so many different simmers, flying so many different uh, simulator softwares, which is a Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane or Prepart 3D. And there's so many variations of different planes, you just cannot make everyone happy. And they decided that instead of uh, using this lower portion as an axis, as a continuation of an axis, we'll just make it a switch. So people will decide on their own what, what they want to assign to this switch, how they're going to use it. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, apparently, there is a way to assign prop feather into a switch. This is not the case in Explain 11, unfortunately. However, what I suggested is that probably what Honeycomb should do is to introduce a piece of software, maybe a, a calibration firmware, uh, calibration software which people can run on their Windows machine to choose whether they want this lower portion to be a switch or they want it to be a continuation of the whole axis. Now, why would this be important specifically in X-Plane? Apparently X-Plane has a very beautiful feature integrated into the system which can split an axis into the portion above the detent line and past the detent line. And if you check, if you click this check mark here, for instance, for the one of the throttle uh, levers, it splits this curve into three regions. One is alpha region, which is a standard uh, throttle control, then there's a beta region which goes into reverse, and the finally there's full reverse region. And let's see how it works. 
So now I switched this particular prop into several regions and you can see it goes from full reverse to maximum throttle in just one move. And again, I had to specify it above the detent line because past the detent line there's no register and it, it's not going to register anything. So if Honeycomb was able to provide this ability to ask simmers and have a way to choose whether we want this as a switch or whether we want it as a continuation of the uh, axis, we could use this ability in X-Plane and we can re register the motion past the detent line as the beta and then reverse mode and the same for props. That would be a very useful feature indeed. This is what I suggested when I was on the phone with Honeycomb Tech Support. As of now, there is no such software, unfortunately, so we have to survive, we have to live with what we have. And there are other ways how to use these props. One option would be to assign these switches to maximum thrust reversal buttons and explain, which I just did. And the effect of that would be that as soon as I go let me just bring the props up so it works. As soon as I bring my throttles into the reverse mode, it brings the throttles into the reverse, into the full reverse in the simulator. However, I won't be able to pass through the beta region. So it just goes to the maximum reverse without going into the beta region. Another option would be to assign a small button in the left throttle lever which says go around the button you can assign it to toggle reverse mode and if you press this button the props jump into the reverse mode and this way when you start moving them up they actually start reversing the plane it's not the ideal situation because that's now it's gonna work in the real plane but it's kind of a way to overcome this limitation so again if I press this button it uh, moves back to the normal alpha region of the thrust levers. Again, I hope uh, Honey Honeycomb will find a way to fix this firmware limitation in the future. Again, it's a beautiful unit. I, I'm eager to fly planes with it and hopefully with the new firmware it's going to be even better. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, if you have, please leave your comments below and I will answer all the questions you may have uh, to as, as best as I can. Thank you guys and take care.